Are you struggling to find a starting point for your landing page designs? Looking to tap into a wealth of innovative ideas powered by AI? Then you've landed in the right place. In today's video, we're going to demonstrate how you can utilize AI tools to kickstart your design process. We'll deep dive into how you can generate fresh ideas all with the power of AI. Let's get started. First up is Mixo. Mixo is an AI tool which allows you to create websites on the fly very quickly. And um, once you sign up or once you log in to Mixo, you will get this prompt where it asks you, what is your startup idea? So in this client project I worked on, I put in the keywords in here and I was able to generate this wireframe very, very quickly. So if you look at this wireframe, this page is basically focused on the hero journey notebook, which is basically a, a journal which people can use to, um, you know, write their journals and also they can use it to color some of the pages. So I can see here, it's done a good job where I have a headline, I have a subheading, uh, they even put like a dummy testimonial in here. And there's some other sections here, which I can obviously look at. But um, overall, obviously, I can't just use this because it's very minimal. But I can at least see there are some things here, which I can definitely um, say, for example, the, the headline is pretty good. When you will click the customization option in Mixo, this is the screen or these are the different options you will see. And in here, you can enable, disable different sections. For example, you can enable the frequently asked questions section and define your different questions and answer them. Um, although this is a good list, but obviously it's quite limiting. What I have put together here, which I will actually link in the description, is basically a list of all the different landing page elements you should include on your landing page. Um, if it's a lead generation landing page, then obviously things are slightly different. I actually have a YouTube video where I cover the lead generation landing page in more detail, which I'll also put in the description. So this will kind of help you put together a structure in place in mind, but let's, let's keep on going. Let's see what we can do with other tools. Next up is WriteSonic. Once you sign up to WriteSonic, you can check here, there's a feature or there's a tab here called Website Copy. And in here, there's an element here called Landing Pages. So once you click on it, it will take you to this page where you can define some of the features and some of the kind of overall description of the product. So I haven't run this earlier, so I'm gonna run this for the first time. So let's see what's what it generates for us. So I'm gonna click Generate here. Cool, so this is what it has done for us. So as you can see, there's like a logo here and there's like sign in, log in, just for reference. And then we have a good headline here, turn your goals into epic quests with the hero's journal. And the this is one of the features which I put in here with the 91 day planet journal hybrid of the hero journal. You can use your words and action to make your dreams a reality. This is pretty good. And then let's see, turn your goals into epic adventures. That's pretty good. And th these could be the features, unleash your creativity, create a legendary future, take a break without the guilt. That's pretty good. And take the first step on your quest and start writing the legend of your life. <laughs> that is pretty good. So let's look at option number two, so you can kind of flip through different options. So unleash your inner hero with the hero journal. Pretty good. Um, start here, I think that's pretty much similar. Unleash your inner journey and embark on your journey today. Again, pretty good. Let's look at option three. Take your goals on an epic quest with a hero journal. Turn ordinary goals into a legendary journey with the blah, 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 blah. Again, I think these are really good uh, sources of inspiration. Um, and if, for example, I can tell, I can use one of them and put put them in a, like, um, in a swipe file for now and then keep on going. So if you look here, so we have our headline, we have our subheading, we have some of the kind of big benefit here, and then the features. So feature one, feature two, feature three, and then a final call to action. So this is a good building block of a, of a landing page. So if we are kind of using this landing page to, let's say, market this product or get um, get like put it on Kickstarter and generate like a um, you know email list, this could be the page. So. Next thing, we, let's say we, we are you're going to use this structure. So we're going to use this wireframe structure. Uh, we obviously need to, to mock it up and to see how this page will actually look. Um, so let me show you what I have. So if I go to the website right now, it's called the Hero Journal. And uh, they already have some kind of graphics in here. There's like um, a lot of um, illustrations, 
but they don't have anything specific for this product which I'm currently working on. So what can I do here? There is a tool which will definitely help us. Let's have a look. Right, so <laughs> this tool is called Midjourney. Midjourney, think of it like as, a, as an artist or a designer who can create like really amazing graphics, but again, some of the graphics can be out of this world with no kind of physics in mind, or it's almost like having Picasso next to you and you can give him ideas to draw something out. And um, I wouldn't use it primarily for like UI or designing any kind of functional things. Think of it as more of a painter, as I said, Picasso. Picasso won't be able to generate or design like uh, a web page for you, but it can give you, it, it, yeah, he can give you like ideas of what, how to use maybe various colors and various styles. So, and one of the really cool things, once you set up Midjourney, you will be able to do three things. The first thing is describe. So you can use this prompt called describe and upload an image and then ask it, what does it think of that image? So I'm not going to waste too much of time here, but I'm going to show you exactly what the result is. So for this particular project, I was I uploaded this image, uh, which I got from the client's website, and um, it helped me with four different options, or it kind of provided an explanation of what it thinks of this image. So these four options are here. So jungle, wallpaper, in the style of rough, blah, blah, blah. There's I can look at all of these four options and think which one is the closest one which describes this image. So in I just took almost like a guess and I chose number four. And then once I click number four, it is then able to do it, do something with it. So for example, create its own version. And uh, to show you what it did, I'm gonna open this in a browser so that I can show you in full screen. Have a look at this. This is incredible because it kind of matches that style of that image. And now it has shown me like four different options uh, to choose from. And I can then go back to it and say, oh, I like this um, I like this kind of prompt. So I'm gonna use the same prompt. But now I'm gonna say, add like a hero walking. That's the only bit I added and on top of that prompt. So uh, you might be wondering what these values are. So this is basically uh, the ratio, so eight, 18 to 11. And this is the latest version where you provide like version five to kind of use the latest version. But apart from that, yeah, the prompt is very simple. You kind of use forward slash imagine and then write your prompt. So in this case, um, I copied whatever it was able to describe and then use that as a prompt and just added hero walking because this is the hero's journey and I want to use a hero in the image. So if we look close up in this image, so I'm going to open it up in a new browser. As you can see, there's like a hero sitting here in the next image. There's a hero standing here and there's a hero like in the middle of the river or lake. And then there's another hero here. So it's done a very good job. Although like some of the physics, as I said, could be weird because in this case, the hero has a weird leg. But apart from that, yeah, let's, let's excuse that. So what you can do now is pick the version which you like. So for example, I like this version two. So I can click V2. So these are the four options, V1, V2, V3, V4. So V1, V2, V3, V4. If I click V2, now it will use the same kind of prompt, but give me more options. So it will use the same kind of look and feel of this version two, and then create more four images based on that. And that will help me kind of figure out whether this is kind of going in that direction where I would like it to go. And if I like any of the images it was able to generate, I can then use these U values. So U1, U2, U3, U4, depending on which one I like, and I can download that as an image. So this is incredible because you can then use it to generate like, let's say, hero images or background images or um, images for your features or benefits. I don't know. You can think of like all the different um, scenarios where you want to use an image. So now, again, it was able to create the same kind of look and feel. But now let's let's look at the subtle differences. So, for example, in this case, the hero is like standing here. It's kind of wearing this kind of, I don't know, uniform or dress. Um, this leg, <laughs> this this hero is missing a leg, so I'm going to ignore that. Oh, this looks pretty good. Um, and then we have another one here. So again, depending on like which image I like, I will then click, let's say, U4, 
and then it will be able to generate like an ultra high quality version of it, which I can then download and then use. You might be wondering why not you just use Midjourney to create a mocker for a landing page. And I actually did that for this particular project. So I went to Midjourney, typed in the prompt, create a landing page mocker for a notebook, which has a hero's journey. And I gave it the ratio of nine to 16, which is the kind of web page um, ratio and used version five. And it was able to generate four different mockups for me. And if you look here, um, yeah, they, they're good for kind of getting some kind of inspiration. But as you can tell, you can't actually use this because the, the, the text is quite random. Um, the imagery is like slightly random as well. Um, I particularly feel that you should be using Midjourney to create like each image separately. Um, but for an overall angle, if you want to look at the entire mockup, you can use Midjourney for that as well. And that's the next bit. So this is where you can kind of now generate all your images for your page and then put them all together. Let's look at that stage next. So now you have your copy and you have some of the imagery wizardry, <laughs> which you can now use to generate your images. The next thing is to actually make a page, like a page which you can publish out there so people can visit it. The, the tool which I want to show you is called Framer, Framer.com. On Framer.com, you can come in here, sign up, do all the stuff, and then click on Pages and click the landing page uh, template. Once you click the landing page template, it will show you these three different views, which is basically your desktop, tablet, and mobile. And in here, you have sections pre-defined or pre-made, which you can obviously change. You can drag and drop like exactly the element which you want, to, which you want, and then replace it. So, in in I just yeah, I did it. I made a shortcut here and I want to show you that. So this is how the page looks by just making some subtle changes. So I was able to like change the imagery which has it, which I generated from Midjourney. And then I dragged in a component, which was basically a form. So I clicked on insert and clicked forms and I dragged it over to my hero section and basically changed the heading to the one which we copied from Right Sonic. You can follow this checklist, and if you see, there are quite a few elements which I have here. One of them is testimonials. So Framer will allow you to add different blocks, as I showed you, but if you click on Insert and Sections, then you can see there's a testimonial block. And once you drag it over, you can easily edit the text, change the imagery. If you need to generate more copy for your, let's say, features, you can use Write Sonic or ChatGBT. If you need imagery, you can use Midjourney. Or if you want to download some stock photos, you can use a website called pexels.com. Once you made changes to your page, just click Publish and Update your page. It will show you a URL which you can access. And this URL, you can, you can easily share with your, um, you know, with your visitors, and they can start <laughs> checking out your page. This is obviously the basic building block of how you can use AI to shortcut a lot of process. But personally speaking, obviously this is not where you can expect it to be um, an agency level design or like a um, design which is so bespoke to what you're building, but it does help you in shortcutting the process of this inspiration. So what happens if you're starting from a blank canvas and you don't know where to start, especially if you don't have the right skills, if you don't know how to use Photoshop or Adobe XD or Figma. All these tools are, again, there for people who are experts. But if you are somebody who wants to dive you know, into this realm by shortcutting this process of learning all these different tools, you at least have that option where AI will help you.